what Octophony does is it provides the accompaniment for the performers who are on stage in this act. In a, in a brief synopsis of what happens, it begins with this really epic battle between Michael and Lucifer. It's the battle that is described in the Book of Revelation. And one of the, the signature things about Octophony is that it's one of his signature moments uh, in terms of his use of space. And I think the people certainly who came here the last time to hear Groupin, one of the things you remember most vividly about hearing that piece live is there is a moment when he takes a single chord and he whips it around the audience. So there's the three orchestras around the audience. And, you know, through clever orchestration, he just moves this chord around the audience it really, really rapidly so it sounds like you're in this kind of tornado of sound. And in octophonie, the, the illusions are all militaristic. So, for instance, the, one of the signatures of the pieces are these sound bombs, which are meant to represent the, the warfare that's going on. And so you'll hear a bomb kind of get launched and then go over your shoulder, depending on where you're sitting, and land somewhere behind you or in front of you. The sound going from the front bottom to the back top sounds like it's racing over your head. And of course, if you, as the audience, are closer to those speakers, you're going to hear that as going off into the distance. But if you're in the back, you're going to hear that as coming towards you. And that's part of the fun of the piece, is that no two listeners are going to hear it the same way. And of course, in all of his electronic music scores, he always indicates that the best way to listen to these things is with your eyes closed in the dark, because it's um, you know not meant to be watched with movies and you know tied to all these other things. It's the best thing to do is close your eyes and go on this sonic journey. But he was aware that a lot of people would be uncomfortable sitting completely in the dark. So what he always specified is. You could project a small moon uh, somewhere high up on a wall so that it's a point of light that people could look at. So that the idea of the moon imagery is very much in keeping with the spirit of how he preferred his purely electronic works to be presented.